Good evening. It's 9 p.m. here in Seoul. Thank you for joining us on Arirang News. President Yoon Sung yeol will attend a historic summit with his U.S. and Japanese counterparts at the U.S. Presidential Resort of Camp David as the three leaders seek to take trilateral cooperation to a new level in key areas, including in security and economic issues. Our presidential correspondent, Wu Su-young, standing by very close to the summit venue in Maryland. We connect with her now. So Seung, it's the morning of the unprecedented summit. Excitement is building here in the nation. So what's the atmosphere like there around Camp David? A very good evening to you, Chiang. It is still rather early here in the morning, um, but we're still feeling the excitement already just about three kilometers away, a stone's throw away from the Camp, venue, uh, Camp David venue. Soon, President Yoon will arrive at Camp David on a U.S. military for the much-anticipated summit with President Joe Biden and Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, amid the lush green scenery and the sound of birdsong. There's understandably a great level of excitement, as it's the first time ever that the leaders of the three countries are holding a standalone summit. It's a true testament to how relations between South Korea and Japan have really improved dramatically since March this year, fully restoring their trade and intel sharing arrangements ever since. Yoon's set to have a one-on-one -on -one with President Biden and Prime Minister Kishida as well. Uh, they'll also have a luncheon, uh, so that's going to give them around six hours together, giving them plenty of time to build an even stronger report <laughs> for future cooperation. The summit is also symbolic as it's the first time in 15 years that a South Korean leader has visited the iconic presidential resort and also President Biden's first time ever holding um, hosting world leaders at Camp David. So it's a hugely significant event on various fronts and will definitely make for great optics. Yes, absolutely. And what are some of, what are some of the major outcomes that we can expect? Well, officials in both Seoul and Washington have said that there will be ambitious initiatives to not only ramp up trilateral cooperation, but to institutionalize it by establishing a mechanism and uh, various implement, uh, implementation measures as well. Now, this comes as the three countries face not only a growing nuclear and missile threat from North Korea, but also increased tensions in the South China Sea, uh, rapidly evolving technology and uh, cyber threats as well. So. Uh, to address all of these, we've learned that there will be three major documents coming out of this summit. A UN official told reporters that uh, that three si the three sides have agreed on a third document called the commitment to consult. Now, this is going to be a political pledge that the three countries will jointly address a wide uh, variety of security threats, not limited to North Korean provocations, uh, trade disputes and cyber issues by sharing information and discussing how to respond. Now, the two other documents we've previously heard about are the Camp David principles, something of a vision statement between the three countries on strengthening cooperation and how they see various global issues, as well as the other document, which is the spirit of Camp David. This would be a joint statement that establishes a trilateral consultative body along with initiatives to implement cooperation on extended deterrence, combined military exercises and economic security. Now, the devil is in the details, of course. The measures could include a regular uh, annual joint military drill, uh, possibly including missile interception training, as well as cyber defense and a real-time warning uh, missile warning system. A crisis hotline between the three countries' leaders have also been talked about in media, so that seems to be a possibility. Now, on the economic front, the summit could produce measures to in, uh, increase supply chain cooperation, particularly on sensitive technologies and rare materials related to semiconductors, possibly within, um, with an early warning system between the three countries. Now, we're going to hear more, of course, at the joint press conference later this afternoon uh, in the US. So we'll really have to see what the measures are and whether they will truly make diplomatic history in the 21st century as the officials have claimed they will. Back to you, Chiang. Thank you, Suyong, for that. We'll look forward to hearing from you more about it later.